Hi, I'm Vicki Kane. Welcome to the second episode of Travels with Judy. Today we're starting here from beautiful Greenwich, Connecticut, and we're going to be following in the footsteps of General Putnam, who apparently was a Revolutionary War general that I... Sorry, but I just don't really remember much about him. It's been a while since I've been in high school. So we're going to follow his footsteps and see what we can find out about the man, because quite frankly, there's a lot of things named after him. He must be pretty important. So we're going to start here and find out why there's a Putnam Avenue, a Putnam, Connecticut, a county, Putnam County in New York, and uh, learn something exciting in the process and have some fun. So come along for General Putnam, man or myth. To begin our journey, we decided to go to one of General Putnam's many namesakes, Putnam Park in Reading, Connecticut, which is some 30 miles give or take from Greenwich. Lucky for us, our dear friend and all-round smart gal, Erin Eisenbarth, was willing to meet us to get us the historical lowdown on Old Putt. So, so what can you tell us about General Putnam? Well, there are lots of things that are interesting about his life. He was born in 1718 in Danvers, Massachusetts and died in 1790 in Brooklyn, Connecticut. And in between, he had a very exciting life. According to legend, he killed the last wolf in Connecticut when he was a young man. How did he do that? With a gun. <laughs> Why did he do that? Well, there was a wolf that had been killing a lot of livestock in the area where he lived and it was really upsetting a lot of the farmers. And he led a group of his neighbors to track the wolf down um, into a cave in um, outside of town. And uh, the wolf crawled into the back of the cave, so Putnam crawled in after it. Uh, he had a rope tied to his legs so his friends could pull him back out again. He crawled in with a gun, shot the wolf, got pulled back out again, went in and dragged the wolf out by its head. and. Um, when he did this, this gave rise to the legend that he actually strangled the wolf to death, but that's not uh -huh. true. Um, there's a lot of things about Putnam, actually, that have a little bit of a tinge of legend to them. What is General Putnam mainly known for? He is supposed to have been the person at the Battle of Bunker Hill who said, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. The other thing that he's probably best famous for um, concerns the area that we're in here today, um, which is Connecticut's Valley Forge. And during the winter of 1778 and 79, this is where um, Putnam and the troops he was commanding spent their, uh, spent their winter. Just like the real Valley Forge, this was not a pleasant place to spend an 18th century winter. And the men were short on food and clothing and shoes and were generally quite miserable. And there were even a few attempts at mutiny, which Putnam was able to put down. Wow. And I mean, we're here, it's January now, and it's, it's cold. Uh, how long, I can't imagine what it would be like to be out here without... Without Thinsulet? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and also, you know, um, given global warming and other things, winters in this area of Connecticut used to be much more severe than they are now. And if you can imagine having to be out here in uh, wool garments, spending the night in a drafty cabin or a tent. Um, it wasn't a lot of fun, and I certainly understand why those soldiers got angry. What can you tell us about these uh, priceless archaeological remains that we're sitting on? Well, these are all that's left of the uh, fireplaces that were part of the cabins that the soldiers stayed in here um, during the winter encampment. Is it okay to be sitting on these fireplaces? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> We'll pretend it is. So at the front of the park, there's a statue of him riding a horse down some steps. And um, I don't see any steps around here. And I, what's that story about? That um, has more to do with the town of Greenwich, actually. Um, Greenwich, and, Connecticut. Yes. Ah, so back to Greenwich, we need to go. But first, Judy and I decide to mosey once more around the park before heading out. Oh, when you think there's no brides tomorrow. Just 
to the army, walk to the cavalry. February, and the uh, legend is that General Putnam had seen out through the window, was staying in this tavern, mm -hmm. and had seen out the window uh, some of the British and a fairly strong raiding party were coming up the hill. So he had very quickly thrown on his coat, jumped on his horse just as they were coming into the yard, and his famous ride was he went down, a, he was such a good horseman that he mm -hmm. went down a very steep set of stairs on horseback. Uh, and the British were not able to follow him and catch him in time. Where he went was to go a few miles to the, uh, to the east where he was able to then bring together some of the troops of which um, some of our regiment, Sheldon's Horse, 2nd Continental Light Dragoons, came back and what you saw reenacted here today was the driving out of the raiders um, and pushing them back down toward New York. So what can you tell us about your unit? We are actually a continuation of the original regiment. We were reestablished uh, in the late 1980s. Um, our captain, Sal Tarantino, had actually uh, uh, reestablished its research, helped reestablish this, mm -hmm. and we're recognized by Congress uh, as the reestablished regiment. So we are actually part of the state of Connecticut military. So department. can you actually be called to war somewhere? We, if we they can would be, need you, would you get on your horses? And well, actually, no, it's interesting because the they are starting to use the horseback uh, training and such again for special forces in places like really? Afghanistan. But no, we are a ceremonial unit. Um, we do get activated by Governor Ralph from time to time mm -hmm. to represent her at different events. We're really about education, uh, teaching people about what it was like during the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War, how a soldier lived. Uh, so it appears that General Putnam was quite deserving of all his fame and glory after all. Wolf killer, famous general, and skilled horseman made him the idol of many, and I can now see why his legend lives on. Judy and I were tired though, so after saying goodbye to our new friends, we jumped in the Jeep and headed back home to rest up before our next adventure. But you won't ever come around, darling, if you would only have me back. I would try to stand my ground. But out on a distant horizon I know there's good times waiting round I swear to God that I love you But he ain't standing at my side So do they have iPhones uh, back in the day? No, but if Washington had one of these, I'll tell you, he would have uh, not needed so many secretaries and not a lot less intelligence, let me tell you. This is, uh, uh, as an 18th century guy, I can tell you this 21st century technology is uh, really, really helps us do a lot. So. <laughs>